I cannot believe I haven't done a tofu dedicated episode yet. So welcome to the ultimate tofu crispy guide because it would be unfair to say this is the ultimate tofu guide because that would be unfair to tofu which comes in many ways, shapes, and forms. But today we are focusing on crispy because tofu is the ultimate blank canvas. Whether you are a vegetarian, a pescatarian like me, or a meat eater, tofu doesn't get the love it deserves because if you're making like chicken or meat, you kind of have to focus the dish around what matches with that, where tofu you can do anything you want with it. So today we're focusing on extra firm tofu only. This is what gets us like that really like, for lack of a better word, firm, meaty texture. And we're gonna be doing it crispy two ways. Get excited, because we're doing a naked tofu and then a tofu katsu, which is more like a breaded tofu. But both are super blank canvases. You can pair them with anything. And they're also super easy to do. So let the ultimate guide begin. So I have all the things for my ultimate tofu pressing kit because yes, you can totally buy a tofu press. And I used to be really anti-pressing my tofu until I realized that it does just like give you that extra like rich texture. But tofu presses only let you press the entire block. My first rule for any tofu is you wanna press it in slices. It makes your pressing process faster and it also makes it way easier. So draining these and then we'll get our pressing station going. It's a little, it's a little wet. We're gonna fix that. Now I'm using paper towels. If you have a better and more sustainable way that you like pressing your tofu, please leave a comment below. I know for a lot of people, paper towels are not ideal, but I find they work really well for achieving the goal. So pressing lightly before we slice, and then I'm gonna slice them both in two different ways. Also apologies, you can hear my dog walking around. It's not, it's not going away. So this is gonna be the tofu katsu, and this is gonna be the naked tofu. Literally, you're gonna hear Walter this entire episode. And we're cool with that, because it makes it feel like we're all cooking together with my dog. So for the naked tofu, I want them pretty thick, because we are gonna be pan searing both sides. Just like everybody has a preferred way to cut their sandwich, I do believe, and I'll fight you on this, I do believe that the ultimate way to cut tofu is a little tofu triangle. Feel free to argue with me, but I'll just be over here being correct. I'm just kidding. So let's put our triangles to the side. And I wanna get these pressing at the same time because the tofu katsu we're gonna press for a little bit longer. And that, we're just gonna thinly slice it because we are dredging these and then we're going to shallow fry them, unlike the naked tofu, which we're just gonna pan sear. And this is to imitate like, you know, chicken or pork katsu where they like pound it to tenderize it. We want it like the same type of thinness. Both our tofu's cut, we can set this to the side and get pressing. And a pressing station is super easy. Once again, we are doing a bottom layer of paper towels. I was like, a new roll will be so great. Not inconvenient at all. It's truly, it's very inconvenient. So paper towels down, and this is just so the moisture has somewhere to go. And then place our tofu. You're probably like, no, duh, but I want you to have the experience. You know, I want you to know that if you should ever have any questions about tofu pressing, I'm here to answer it. So you could use strength of will, but we're also gonna just use cookbooks to weight this down. I use like, I've used everything under the sun. I've used a cast iron, I've used a tea kettle, but today we're gonna use the wonderful works of Pauline wonderful. Chrissy Teigen, I know she's had some shit in the media, but we're just not going to talk about it. Erin McDowell, my unproblematic queen, Joanne, who I love. Okay, so we're going to let that press for about like 10, 15, and then we're, we're going to do the same with these. Nothing is more upsetting than having everything fit so picture perfectly and then having just like a little lonely, little lonely piece of tofu. We'll press that one later. <laughs> And I do, I do own books besides cookbooks, I promise, but like, Cherry Bomb's a classic, can't be mad at that. Priya Krishna's also a classic. Brewmaster's Table from when I was a pick me and was like, yeah, I know about beer. And then The Escapism of Cooking. All of these are great books. Brewmaster's Table is questionable, unless you like really like beer. Um, and while our tofu is pressing, I got out my favorite thing to talk about, which is our tools. I spent so much of my life using bad tools and now I'm like, Never again. So I'm actually gonna be starting with the tofu katsu first because that we are shallow frying and I'm gonna be using a made in like shallow pan, um, shallow skillet because you could do this in a Dutch oven or like a deeper skillet. The problem is the heat goes up, hits the walls, steams down so it eliminates the ultimate crisp factor. So you wanna do this in anything that has like a lower 
rim a lower lip. So that's that one. And then for the naked tofu, I am gonna be using my Lodge cast iron. I'm a Lodge loyalist, it's never done me wrong. And that's because this type of pan, unlike a non-stick, kind of gets a better char and a better sear on it. And that's just because of the power that cast irons have. So pans are covered. Next we'll do dredging for the tofu katsu and then we'll get like, we'll get cooking. Now, if you're familiar with like deep frying anything, the dredging process is not gonna be unfamiliar to you. I just have a few like tweaks that I do to make this tofu katsu. I'm adding a little bit of flavor in the actual breading process, but if you want complete blank canvas tofu, you don't have to do that. So we're using panko, thanks Trader Joe's. You can also use cornmeal if you're gluten-free. You can also use any store-bought breadcrumb or you can make your own breadcrumbs. But panko I like though because it gives like a really like crispy golden crumb. And so panko is going to be our outer layer. And to get everything sticking on that, we're gonna use the tried and true classic cornstarch. Cornstarch is kind of like the first barrier that our tofu is gonna hit. And also you can use flour, but I just found cornstarch has like that extra grippy factor, which is the scientific term for it. <sighs> cornstarch always chooses violence and I'm out too. So that's all, that's literally all we have. We might switch to flour strictly out of necessity. Cornstarch, panko, and then you can use an egg if you're vegetarian. I'm using a plant-based milk, just so all my plant-based queens know that it's possible. Since we are going to be doing a katsu style, not authentic, I'm gonna be adding a little bit of shoyu and a little bit of rice vinegar. We're just starting with that base flavor, so then it's kind of already built into the tofu. So whatever you're choosing your tofu to be, like barbecue, hot, katsu, you can like build that into the dredging process. Our tofu, oof, should be done pressing. Whoa, so we thank the books for their service. 10 out of 10, great job team. And then peel. Now, the one thing that I am horrible at is using one hand for wet, one hand for dry, but I will do it because now that I have a YouTube channel, I have to apparently follow rules. So we're gonna do one hand for dry, one for wet, which is why I have the wet over here and then place everything on here and then we'll get ready to shallow fry it. I already, I need to like hide this hand. And for the viewer at home, I am using a drying rack both before we fry and probably after we fry and that's just to preserve as much breading as possible. It's a delicate little process. So we did have to switch to flour because cornstarch, you know, chose violence, but it is a less squeaky feeling and also a great dredging option. Like honestly, no difference. So don't go out and buy cornstarch for this if you don't have it. I just prefer to use it, but again, it burnt me today, so flour might be the MVP. And we're ready. My shallow frying 101. Three things that you need to know. Number one, use an oil that has a high smoke point. This is avocado oil, its smoke point is around 500 degrees. We're not gonna be going above 500 degrees, but it's just like a safety thing. You don't wanna be shallow frying in olive oil. You've got a lower smoke point, just in general, not good. So sunflower oil, grapeseed oil, avocado oil, canola oil, vegetable oil. We got a, we, you have options. Second thing, see how our breaded little guys are all just, um, for lack of a better word, very fuzzy, but not chunky. It might sound really good to have like really big chunks of breadcrumb on there, but what they're gonna do is they're gonna flake off and they're gonna burn. You will see some flaking off, but that just like mitigates that. Number three is we're bringing our oil to temperature, which means we're adding cold oil to a cold pan and then heating it up. This is pretty much frying 101 common knowledge, but just if you're doing this at home, you don't wanna start with a hot pan and then add oil. It won't work out the way that you want it to. We want to bring that oil up to heat. So let's move over to the stove and let's like, let's get shallow frying. All right, avocado oil is going in and it's gonna be about a centimeter high because these are pretty thin. So it's gonna cover most of the side. I'm not deep frying because that's a process, but shallow fry gets the same amazing results and it's just as delicious. Now, a lot of people think frying is like this intense, quick process because we have this picture in our head of like deep fryers where the food goes in and then two minutes it comes out. And I'm here to tell you like, yes, but also no. Right now my stove is induction and it goes up to a 10 and we're only setting it to a four. So I heat up the oil on medium heat. I keep it there because you don't want the oil to like increase and increase and increase in temperature because then your first batches are good, but then your last batches are burnt. It's a whole process. So what I really want to tell people is frying is about 
patience, even though deep frying makes it feel like it is a combat sport. But we're just gonna take this slow, do two minutes on each side, get them all crispy and golden, and then that's, that's the whole thing. Okay, I don't have a candy thermometer, but I feel like the oil is ready. You can kind of tell when there's like a little bit of like movement or shimmer in it, not a simmer, that's, that's dangerously too high. But what I'm gonna do, actually do is do one tester tofu, and if it hits and sizzles, then we're where we want it to be. It's my favorite noise, along with the subway noise that we know and love on this channel. <laughs> You don't want to do too many at a time, then it'll bring your overall oil temperature down, and you don't want the oil to be going up, down, up, down, because then that'll take away from the consistency of the fry. I love shallow frying. Please vote in comments, filet of fish or chicken nuggy. I will be tallying and deciding who wins. And that is a wrap on the shallow fry. And people ask me all the time, how do I clean like a pan with hot oil in it? Let it cool, and then that problem's gone. So then you're just cleaning a pan with cold oil in it. So safety first, cool your pan. And that's it for our crispy tofu katsu ones, which I'm calling it katsu because that's what I kind of modeled this after, but this recipe is like totally a blank canvas. You can do it with like hot sauce. You can do it with teriyaki sauce. You can do it with piri piri sauce would be really good. But since this is the katsu version, I'm gonna finish off with this monster bottle of sriracha. It's a lot of sriracha, but it serves a purpose. And then QP mayo, scallions, and of course, sesame seeds. Okay, I'm obsessed with this. It's so good and you're like, of course it's good, it's deep fried. But we are also gonna do the naked tofu version, which is not deep fried, that is pan seared. So I promise, crispy tofu can be delicious, fried or seared, you know, it's all about what you do with it. So let's do that version, but first, the crunch. Okay, back to work. And the next one. These have now been pressed within an inch of their life, which is right where we want them. They are firm. So what we're gonna do is just put them on the cast iron with a little bit of oil. And the process there is all about waiting it out because these are gonna get golden brown, crispy, and delicious. And that'll be like your less intense, still delicious blank canvas crispy tofu. So let's get, let's get these on the cast iron. Okay, and this time we are using olive oil. Don't be like me and store your olive oil by the stove unless you're using it like me, which is all the time because olive oil can go rancid quickly if it's stored in a hot place, but we're just gonna ignore that. I'm allowed to break the rules. So we're using olive oil for this one because we just need the surface to be slippery. The cast iron's really gonna do all the work. Cast irons are naturally non-stick because of carbonized oil, but we are not frying. We are just making sure that the tofu has a place to go. So our cast iron's already a little hot, not smoking hot because nothing happened to the oil when it hit. We're gonna let it heat up a little bit more and then our tofu goes on and you'll see it just start to like get like a little toasty brown. And then that is naked tofu, much easier. Okay, so this is what you're looking for. Tofu is kind of like fish in the way that when it's ready to flip, it will release from the pan and otherwise be sticky before that. You're looking for a goldeny brown kind of looking literally like toast. That means all the moisture has evaporated, you're getting a nice golden crust and then you can flip everything else. little tofu toasts, equally crispy, way less work. All you need is a cast iron, but you could also do it on like a saute pan, a stainless steel pan, carbon steel if you're that fancy. I could do a whole show on carbon steel pans because they're a lot, but the tofu itself is solid. I like to serve it with like ketchup or buffalo sauce. Treat it like a little chicken nugget, but you can also throw it in soups, throw it in stir fries, throw it in sa oh, salads, it's really good. And the process stays the same whether you're marinating it first, not marinating it at all. So you can just build up that flavor in the tofu. But for the ultimate crispy tofu guide, I wanted to give you guys a blank canvas. I wanted to give you guys just the basics on how to use your pans, how to use your tools to make sure that your tofu has the best texture. Now we're gonna eat these, probably all of them. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Always, always, always leave a comment if you have any questions, requests, things you wanna tell me, jokes. That's new. Like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.